About this time, more than 30 years ago, fast food workers in Beloit found a baby in a dumpster. The death of the little girl has weighed heavily on the community and investigators really ever since. They tell News 3's investigates Jennifer Hoff they need help solving this cold case Wisconsin. Michelle and Eric, the baby girl was only alive a short time, but she made a long lasting impact on a lot of people. Her parents never came forward, but a community did and gave the girl they call Baby Valentine a proper goodbye. Who does that to an innocent child? Tammy Robson will tell you. I just had to do something, anything. It was a trying time. It was so sad. I mean, you, you could just feel the overall loss of a baby we didn't even know. A then 22-year-old Beloit resident, she mourned a life lost too soon, along with her entire town. This had to had tear the community apart that something like this would happen. Two days before Valentine's Day, 1982, at Milwaukee Road and Interstate 90, some McDonald's employees had a startling sighting. McDonald workers went out to empty the trash, and when they opened the dumpster, they seen a small baby's arm reaching through a paper bag. The five-pound Caucasian girl lived about 10 hours. Her mother may have given birth in one of the hotels nearby, according to police detective John Farney. This whole winter's been reminiscent of that day, basically. I mean, it's been cold. So cold, her gravesite at East Lawn Cemetery is frozen over. But when it was warmer, Farney's camera captured how a community came together. A group of citizens from Beloit collected enough money to get a headstone. A heart shape in honor of the holiday, her dress handmade by the coroner's wife for a funeral newspaper clipping say strangers showed up to. He did some readings and then we all did some prayers over her. Strangers like Tammy Robson, not yet a mother, but she had the same instinct nonetheless. Our mom up and left us for me to watch these kids and that was only 14. For years, Tammy took care of her own siblings. It's hard because a lot of them were young. I mean, really young. She didn't let them grow up alone, and she hopes baby Valentine hasn't felt that way either. I like to go back, you know, at least once a year and bring her some flowers or bring her a teddy bear. While the case captivated a lot of attention, investigators got few tips then, and now Farney hopes someone comes forward. It could help put this case to rest and let a little one do so in peace. If somebody would just be willing to call and say, this is who the mother was. This is what happened anonymously through Crime Stoppers. That would, you know, that's all we're asking for. Now, Detective Farney is sure the mother is from Beloit, given she wrapped the baby in a bread bag from the former local grocery store named the Food Basket. The state crime lab is also processing some fingerprints. Boy, it's still hard to hear that story even after all this time. Did police ever have any suspects? No, not officially, but uh, Detective Farney nowadays is actually chasing down that couple who rented a room at one of those nearby hotels. In 1982, police actually found bloody sheets in those hotel rooms, but a doctor ruled that the woman was not pregnant when baby Valentine would have been born. Detective Farney wants to test their DNA with the technology that is available now. So if you know anything, the anonymous Crime Stoppers number is 608-362-7463, and we will, of course, include that number and information online. All right, Jennifer, thank you very much.